All right, everyone, welcome back to Cody's Lab. So in late 2020, on December 21st, the planets Jupiter and Saturn got closer to each other in the sky than they had been visibly in over 800 years. Now, of course, they weren't actually close. They were, in reality, billions of miles apart, but from our line of sight, they were almost lined right up. And actually, if you were on Saturn, looking back towards the Jupiter and the Earth, you would actually see Jupiter and Earth getting close together. You might even be able to see Earth's moon. Um, I'm not sure, though, if your naked eye could do it. That's very close to the sun at that point. But this is an awesome event, and I made sure to see it. In fact, I drove over 120 miles to avoid clouds. I was successful, and here's some photos that I managed to take of the event. They were so close together that without my glasses, it actually looked like a single dot. It looked like a single point of light in the sky. It looked like one planet. That's really cool. And of course, with my glasses on, I could tell them apart, but they were very close. So I'm sorry to anyone who didn't get to see it. Um, you might get another chance in 2080 something, if you live that long. And also, there's loads of pictures online, and honestly, the pictures are in a lot of ways are a lot better. So anyway, this event did not take place over a single day. It took place over months. In fact, you, for most of the year, you could see the two planets in the sky slowly getting closer and closer together. And so on October 1st, when they got close enough that I could get them both in the same view of my camera, I started taking pictures every night, at least every night that I could. I would go out. If it was cloudy, then obviously I couldn't do much. But on every clear night, I got a photo. I tried to use the same zoom, the same exposure, etc. And the idea is to make a time lapse. So I took a picture every night uh, through the conjunction all the way up to about uh, January 6th when Saturn was just too close to the sun, uh, you know, from our point of view. Uh, it, it didn't get dark enough to be visible before it dropped below the horizon. Uh, so January 6th was the last day that I was able to see it. I, I went out a few days after, but that was it. So that was almost a hundred days worth of photos. And uh, here's the photos that I managed to take. Unfortunately, this is very jarring. It's like jumping all over the place. It's not very good to watch. Uh, that's because well, the Earth rotates. The, the photos were taken from different positions on the Earth's rotation, uh, different times of day, and also as the Earth went around the Sun, it changed position. So the first step that I need to do is to stabilize the photos. And I couldn't really get the software to do it, so I ended up having to do it manually. I just put them on the screen in my video editor and then dragged the photo around until it lined up to some marks that I put on the screen using a marker. And I got it within a few pixels. Now when these are put together, it's it's better. You can actually see the planets moving. It's not so bad, but it's still, they kind of jump around. This is because there's gaps. The days that I couldn't take a photo, there, there was clouds, so there's going to be a gap. To fill in these gaps, what I ended up doing is taking the photo uh, before the gap and editing it using MS Paint. You know, cutting the planet out, moving it a certain distance, and then pasting it back in. Uh, for example, if I had a photo and then three days where I didn't have a photo and then another photo, so that's a four-day difference. If the planet moved 100 pixels in that time, then I would divide that by the four, so it would be 25 pixels per day. It's not perfect, but I think it's good enough. So after normalizing the brightness and cropping it down, I'm left with a pretty neat little time lapse. You can actually see how the planets moved relative to each other and the background stars. You can even see Jupiter's moons as they move about. This is so cool. One thing that's interesting is that the planets appear to accelerate as the time lapse goes on. This is because Jupiter and Saturn are moving, but Earth is also moving. In fact, Earth is moving much faster than either of them. In the beginning, Earth was moving basically directly away from the planets, and so their motion was very slow. But towards the end of the time lapse, Earth kind of moved, was starting to move around the Sun, kind of sideways relative to Jupiter and Saturn, so they appear to pass each other faster. Another thing that's kind of cool is you can actually see Jupiter get smaller from the beginning of the time-lapse to the end, and this is, of course, because Earth is moving away. 
Uh, Saturn, though, appears to be about the same size throughout, because Saturn's just so much farther, the extra distance that the Earth moved didn't really matter. Uh, not with the resolution of the camera I was using, at least. So there you have it, a three-month-long planetary time-lapse. I really enjoyed this project, even though it was a lot of work, way more than I thought it would be, and it's probably not going to turn out nearly as well as I hoped, but... I'll also tack on a time-lapse I made of Comet Neowise from earlier in the year. Uh, this one was from one night over a period of about three hours. Comets move way faster than the planets do. So, hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time.